are now streaming worldwide on RadioOnFire.com and the Radio On Fire app. Welcome back. Welcome back. You made Dominic K in here. Dominic K in the morning on the all new Radio On Fire. Dot com. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, so much to get into. Like There is never a dull moment. You know what I'm saying? We're going to talk about Fells Point. It is an area in Baltimore. We're going to talk about Lenox Mall, which obviously a mall uh, in Atlanta, GA, uh, the Buckhead area. Uh, to be more specific and uh, the uptick in violence in both of these areas uh, historically for for quite some time uh, these areas both of these areas have been thought of and represented as um, affluent bougie areas but as of late there has been as I'm saying an up an uptick in violence in these areas why why is this happening i'm going to talk about it of course here in the program we deliver the biggest political and trending news stories of the day with interviews and original reporting from across this country emanating from our studios in baltimore and atlanta the show is fun the show is upbeat but i also want to expose what is really happening in this country Radio fire is black voices giving you the american story and it's a hell of a story before I, before I even dive in, um, I want to say something. So, you know, I encourage people all the time to hop in the comment section, say things, say things to me on social media, even email me, djdiamondk at gmail.com. And uh, I welcome and uh, ask for, you know, comments and thoughts. So, I do that because I, I like to hear what other people think, other people want to say, and and uh, other people's reactions, responses, thoughts, opinions, all of that. That's why I do it, right? So people, you know, say stuff, and I, I read. I pretty much read everything. I don't necessarily respond to everything, but I pretty much read everything. I would say ninety-eight percent of the things that people say uh, in comment sections, I read at some point in time. It may not be in real time, but at some point in time. So, you know, we have some some uh, folks that uh, obviously politically disagree with me and uh, that's fine. Uh, everyone should, you know, feel how you feel. Right. I have this platform because I feel how I feel about different things and I like to talk about it, express my thoughts and my opinions. So anyway, there's 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 certain people that may be on the conservative side of the equation on the right. And you know, I'm not on the right side of things, uh, politically speaking, right? I'm not a conservative uh, uh, about politics, right? I mean, there's some things I'm conservative about, I, I would suppose. Some things I'm liberal about. Nobody's one thing all of the time. Uh, but with regards to Democrats and Republicans, uh, generally speaking, the way it is right now, for the most part, uh, the policies that are brought down by Democrats align more with where I am politically now there's some things that some Democrats do that I don't agree with of course we talked about the dark money in politics that's across the board but generally speaking right you line up a Democrat you line up a Republican and they start talking about what they believe in what they want to enact where they sit with regards to different things more times than not, I'm going to uh, uh, align with the Democrat with regards to many social issues. So I, where am I going with this? You may, you may wonder. So when I'm giving my thoughts, when I'm giving my opinions on things, that's the side that I believe, right? So I, some listeners... <laughs> they they have trouble because they'll say you know he's saying this right this is his feelings he's coming at things from a progressive point of view because i am a progressive coming at things from the 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 left wing because that is i'm a left wing commentator i'm a progressive commentator i'm not a conservative this isn't fox news right this ain't diamond and silk i'm diamond k all right and and 
I don't have to give the other side. If you're telling somebody something, right? The right way of, of something. You're, you're giving your side. I don't have to give the other person's side. It's not, it's not up to me to give the Republican talking point. It's, it's not up to me to make the case for somebody else. I'm not making that case. I'm making the right case the way that I see it. And so when people jump in the comment section and start talking about, who, well, why don't you give the, the other side? No, what, you mean the wrong side? No, I'm not giving that side. That side's crap, right? Black conservatives, and I have some friends that are black conservatives. Yeah, but I mean, you know, they, you, you only give it one. The side that you're on is not aligned with your race first. Okay, black conservative in 2021 doesn't even make sense to me. But if you, whatever you are is what you are, right? But don't say that I have to give the conservative point of view while I give my perspective. I don't have to do that. No, it's not up to me to do that. It's not up to me to do that. And, and I'm not going to do that. When I want people to give that take, because I already know what that take is. But as I'm not I'm not giving that propaganda here on Diamond K in the morning. Now, if I want to have, and I and I do from time to time, talk to people you know, with other perspectives. I mean, I've gone to other people's shows and, and debate about different things. If I want to do that, then I'll bring somebody on, right? As a guest to, to argue that point. But I'm not going to sit here as an attorney and I'm going to argue both sides, right? I'm going to argue, I'm going to argue the, <laughs> I'm arguing the prosecution side and the defense side. That doesn't make sense, right? You pick one and you argue that one. And so, yeah, I needed to say that, get that out of the way. Uh, of course, just here today, Dabbicated Board, they go to the all new radioandfire.com. New episodes of the program drop daily, 8 a.m., but I don't want you to miss any of our live broadcasts. In addition to our 8 a.m. program, we drop content throughout the day as news happens and news is happening. Hit that notification bell so you get an alert whenever we go live. Dabbicated in the morning on the all new Radio on Fire. Dot com. So I'm talking about Fells Point. For people in Baltimore of a certain age, we used to go to Fells Point back in the day, Wednesdays, place called Latin Palace. We'd go down there sometimes. Here and there, we would go, right? So we're talking about early 2000s. And then slowly, little bars, people started going to little bars down there. They would have DJs playing hip hop music, R&B music. Mixed crowds. We're talking about mixed crowds. Of course, Latin Palace was like a like a Spanish spot. But uh, one day a week, they would have Wednesdays, I think it was. They would have uh, hip hop parties once once in a while. But once the hip hop crowd started coming through Fells Point, I knew that it was going to change. <laughs> I knew it was going to change. There are a lot of pubs and little taverns. Some of them have live music. You can get good seafood down that way. Crabs, oysters, and the such. Um... And, you know, it, it's a cool, it's a cool area. Like um, the bougie crowd, the bougie hip hop R&B crowd used to go down there back in the day, years ago. Uh, and uh, so what started to happen over time, of course, like anything, you, you uh, in your city, open it, say you open a new club. And when they first open a new club, it's super strict, right? Super strict, super strict with the dress code, super strict with the IDs. They're super strict with everything because they only want a certain crowd. We, we want to keep the knucklehead crowd out. That's usually how a new club starts. That's usually how it starts. And over time, this thing called greed, thing called greed comes in. So then they start being more lax with the dress code. People can come in, pay a lot of money to not abide by the dress code. And then other people say, oh, they're they wearing tennis shoes. they wearing this. they wearing jeans. they whatever, whatever it is, right? Whatever the dress code is. they wearing that. They pay some money. They got in. And slowly, the vibe of the club changes. The real, real sexy girls like, ooh, this people started to know about this. It's getting too crowded in here. Didn't it? Then the real, real bougie crowd starts leaving and starts getting a little bit more hood. Fights break out. Police come. They start getting warnings. 
They start having underage folks in there. Ain't been checking IDs like that. Cause some some girl comes with a with a you know chest popped up, propped up. They let her through. She ain't had no ID. Police come through. You know what I mean? Start giving them warnings. Next thing you know, clubs close, reopens under a new name, new owner, quote unquote, new owner, new name. Same thing again, but it's never gonna get back to that first. That, that that new car smell, AKA the new club smell, new lounge smell, doesn't get there, doesn't, it doesn't get that. And so you multiply that by several things, se- several times. This, this happens over and over again. I'm a DJ, I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen many times. That happens and it, it, it's unfortunate, but greed, greed, you know, sinks in. This generation anyway, uh, I come from a time where we had big clubs, big clubs. I'm, I'm talking a thousand people or more right now. People party in a bunch of lounges for the most part. Lounges in Baltimore, I'm talking about lounges, small spots. We got some uh, some video of um, of us performing in clubs, 3000 people in there, 4000 people in there and this generation hasn't seen that in Baltimore. I'm talking about in Baltimore too much because all the clubs are closed. All the clubs that are that size are closed. You got lounges, but I'm talking about places that can hold a thousand people, 2000 people. We don't have places like that. And why is that? Well, partially because of the city doesn't want them. <laughs> they don't want the headache that comes with it. There are clubs right now that are still that are still there that were big spots that held a lot of people that are empty buildings right now just sitting there. Just sitting there. The city would rather have those buildings just sit there than actually be open. Because they don't want the trouble that comes with it. When you when you're a certain age, right? Certain age in your 20s, you know, it's you just it's, you're a little bit more rowdy. And usually things mellow out, usually, <laughs> usually. Uh, but um, what we have is a generation of people that, now let me say this, in the clubs, the 20 somethings, back in the day, go to the club, we dance, we drink, talk trash, talk to girls, talk to guys get into some squabbles, maybe have a fight, this, that, disagreement, whatever. Now, this happened at a club. And it would happen, and you know, maybe the club stays in, 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 in business, maybe it doesn't. But this is where a lot of these things happened. So now, you have a, a generation, or you have a city of Baltimore, that doesn't have those clubs now. They tried to shut them down. But they did not stop the culture of people wanting to go out and hear music and being out around other folks their age and you know do stuff so you have people and places where people go and they conjugate they hang out fells point is one of those areas now used to be a bougie area i guess it's still (laughs) i guess it still is bougie somewhat but now people have cars people got uber People got lift. People got a way to get there more than they used to, I think. You can get around even easier now. So these places that used to be off limits now are open. And then Fells Point is near the water, so it's uh, uh, you know, the scenery is visually pleasing to the eye, so people want to go and hang out. I said there are a lot of taverns, and these are small spots now. So anyway, younger folks are hanging out in this Fells Point area and there has been a lot of chaos, gunfire, fights, all kind of stuff going on. And it's it's not anything that we've never, it's not like it's something we've never seen before. Oh my God, what is happening? No, it's not that. It's stuff that we've seen before. It's normal stuff for kids, young youngsters, 20 somethings. 20 somethings is what is what I'm saying. Right? But um, you know, of course no business owner likes it. 
No business owner likes it. I, I, and that's understandable. Fells Point has been calling on city leaders for a new plan to try to curb some of the chaos. Some of the chaos. They've been having some, uh, you know, difficult weekends in the summer. The summer's here. People have been cooped up in the house for the most part for a good period of time. And there was gunfire over the weekend there. Uh, but city leaders are trying to address some of the complaints in Fells Point. Trying to. But they, I mean, there's, there's, there's so many different things going on. I remember when, you know, you, you had something called the club let out. People used to really live for the let out. Sometimes back in the day, the let out was just as exciting as being in the club, if not more. Me, me and my homeboy Tap, rest in peace, used to walk around the parking lot after the club let out we used to use that hammer jacks the uh, specifically and hammer jacks on a sunday night walk walk through the parking lot and and count how many times we heard our song playing in someone's car and then the winner the loser had to buy the winner something to eat after that you know what i'm saying um but it was a party atmosphere. It was like tailgating, almost like tailgating after the club, the let out. And folks would get in the car. And then so, you know, they're in the car, they're driving around and then you have traffic jam because there's so many cars. People jumping out of cars, jumping in other people's cars, girls dancing, uh, just a lot of, lot of party energy, mischief, immaturity and fun. These things used to happen. Different parts of the city. Late night. And Baltimore started this thing called no cruising. It wouldn't let you pass by. So so people used to drive in a certain area, circle the block, keep just just keep driving around the same same area. And uh this led to a lot of things, a lot of the the, the type of of uh, activity that business owners in Fells Point are complaining about. That same kind of stuff happened back in the day. And they, they instituted the road closures and some parking restrictions and no cruising, that type of stuff. And this stuff is going to come back. So Fells Point has been in the news in Baltimore for the wrong reasons. Police are now going to start with road closures, parking restrictions, DWI checkpoints and enforcement, aerial cameras, and social media monitoring. <laughs> it is a different time right now. So city leaders answered questions about what they're going to do to curb the violence in Fells Point. There was a virtual town hall late last week. Oh, because this, you know, the business owners of Fells Point are fed up. First, we didn't have no business. Now we got more people down here acting rowdy than we can handle. We, we want you to put put restrictions back on the people. No more people down here. I mean, make up your mind, business owners. No, but um, uh, those in charge want residents to know the city leaders that they're working on what they're calling a long-term fix. What's a long-term fix? What what is a long-term fix? What what is a, what do you what do you think is going to fix? What do you think the problem is? Is what I'm wondering if, if the city leaders know. The governor, Governor Larry Hogan, who I cannot wait to see leave Annapolis says that this is a basic failure to stop lawlessness and they've got to do something about it. 
That's a typical conservative Republican response. This is about lawlessness. And it, you know what I mean? So that means bring the police down, lock people up, hit them over the head. Is that, is that that's that's usually the conservative response to everything. Getting back to uh, a listener that, that says I'm supposed to give every side all the time. No, I'm not. But here's one of those one of those times where we give the uh, Republican conservative response, which is wrong, which is wrong. But anyway, uh, Hogan said uh, the state is waiting to see what the city is going to do about it before they will step in. Well, understand this, Hogan, you're going to be gone in about 15 minutes. OK, so you can try to flex for whatever you're going to do next, probably run for uh, uh, president and uh, and all of that but don't think that you're going to be able to flex at baltimore's expense so you so you you have governor hogan who is for all intents and purposes a lame duck governor right what i mean you, you're on your way out okay just chill anyway the mayor of Baltimore, Brandon Scott said that he wasn't going to go into detail about his public safety deployment. That would not be a responsible thing for him to do, he said. I mean, I agree you can't go into all the details of the plan because then obviously they can, uh, you know, uh, react to this plan, the folks that are getting into mischief. So you had this virtual town hall last week and some some folks, some politicians detailed some steps that they're going to take. But uh, the mayor doesn't doesn't want to lay out his complete plan just yet. So anyway, um, police commissioner Michael Harrison outlined some of his strategy. He said that it begins with putting a member of senior leadership in charge of overseeing Uh, An increased number of officers, staggering shift times starting at 3 p.m. on Friday, staying as long as they're needed. So naturally, for the police, a.k.a. the hammer, everything looks like a nail, all right? Everything looks like a nail. So they want to have an increased police presence. So have you ever... Uh, seen some of the areas uh, Penn North is one of those areas where you have a police car sitting there so you can see the, the you can see the officer sitting in the car and you know there are things happening around and a lot of activity but they're sitting there they got their lights on and the car is just parked nine times out of ten what is that officer doing well, I mean I know what they're there for they're there for presence People see the lights flashing. At least I do. See the lights flashing and make sure I, I stop behind the crosswalk. Come to a complete stop at a stop sign, right? But I'm the law-abiding citizen. What 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 is it supposed to do for people who are not law-abiding? I'm supposed to let them know, oh, the police are right here. Maybe I don't commit a crime right here. Maybe go around the corner and do it. Something like that, right? But what does that officer usually do? doing the one that's in the car with his lights on his lights are what i call on mute they're just spinning no sound coming out of them they're on their phone maybe they're monitoring social media (laughs) they're looking at their social media and sending a text sending a text to a side chick they're doing something right they're usually looking down and they're there you know overtime you're doing overtime doing something counting down the time but they're there with the the presence i don't know how helpful this is but that's just what they're doing so we're going to have a bunch of officers in their cars with the lights flashing on their cell phones this is going to stop the mischief that's happening in fells point no so they're gonna be in their car and then they're gonna get a call and they're gonna run to, to the call and then what? And they're going to, I mean, you had officers down there when someone was shot a couple weeks ago. 
Officers were a couple feet away. Oh, just We just missed them. <laughs> I don't know how helpful this is going to be. It should be helpful. But um, uh, so rather than say they're working until 2 or 3 a.m., Harrison said, I am committing to you that they're going to keep the officers there until we clear the area and it's safe for officers to actually leave their assignments. On paper, this sounds good. On paper. And, and, and I am definitely optimistic enough to say, let's see what happens. But if this doesn't work, I mean, I go back to the drawing board with something else. What else is there? You may ask. What else is there? The instructions are to be on high alert, police commissioner says, and to scan the crowds continually and try to ascertain who's carrying the illegal weapons and to target them and to go and to make arrests and extract them from the problem. I knew that arrests were coming, so they're going to be quotas as usual. Arrest quotas. You ever see at the end of the month? Of course, police not going to admit this. They can't admit this. You ever see at the end of the month, a whole bunch of people pulled over? You're like, what? What? there's so many officers out here. Wonder what's going on. Same time of the month. Like a woman's cycle. Same time of the month. The officers are out there. I'm telling you their quotas because you can just like they're scanning the crowd to see uh, who's problematic. This is going to be a disaster for the for the record. Let me tell you, he's already laying out a strategy that's going to have black and brown people targeted. The, pol the police commissioner is laying out a strategy. And he's he's instructing them to be on high alert. He's instructing them to scan crowds. And to ascertain who's carrying illegal weapons. How are they doing that? With their x-ray vision? No. They're going to be pulling people up. That may have a weapon. May not have a weapon. And chaos could potentially. Break out. And then we have a much de a deeper. Bigger problem. If these officers. Interpret his instructions. Wrong. You have the potential for that. Just tuning in, Dominic in the morning on the all new radioandfire.com. Of course, you can see that I am uh, <laughs> fired up. Dominic in the morning is available on the WRF Radio app. Simply download WRF Radio in your app store. Leave me a comment. You can scroll your timeline, attend the Zoom meeting on mute, do some online shopping, send some emails, all while listening to Diamond K in the morning. Also available on Google Podcasts. Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, anywhere that you get podcasts. You just search Diamond K in the morning on YouTube.com slash DJ Diamond K or simply go to RadioOnFire.com. Get breaking news and adult conversation covering topics that are important to black culture. Visit RadioOnFire.com for our original radio, podcast, and TV programs. You want to support Diamond K in the morning? Very easy to do that. I'm able to deliver our news and our views on Diamond K in the morning because of our listeners, sponsors, and of course your donations. Diamond K in the morning is powered by the people, and we need your support. You can make a donation, radioandfire.com slash donate. Very easy to do that. And uh, this machine is powered by our advertisers merchandise and sponsors cannot do this without you so going back to fells point going back to the police commissioner in baltimore city is instituting road closures and parking restrictions from 4 p.m to 6 a.m friday to sunday well that'd get them no parking it might, it might help. DWI checkpoints and enforcement by state police. This is going to be a disaster. Uh, the aerial cameras, as we talked about, and social media monitoring to relay info to officers on the ground in real time. Yeah, Benny006 underscore. We think that he just walked past 
the royal farms go get them <laughs> this is a disaster <laughs> this is a disaster but i mean you got to do something you, you got to do something each week they said they're going to be assessing the data going out uh doing site visits We'll be doing compliance checks throughout the weekend to make sure we're implementing our plan. That's what they said. I'm anxious to see how this goes. The mayor's office sent out a statement about Scott's absence, Mayor Scott's absence from the virtual town hall. There was there was a whole big hoopla made about the fact that the mayor was not at this virtual town hall so the mayor said that he was previously scheduled for a community meeting he didn't know that this uptick was going to happen and and violence in fells point and the need for this virtual meeting was going to happen he was already booked for something else it was a town hall requested by the 46th district delegation and councilman council member cohen It was an opportunity for the deputy mayors and the agency heads to address the concerns and present a plan forward to the community. So he sent the deputy mayors to go handle that business. And he was at a town hall, divide and conquer. Why? What's wrong with that? Governor Hogan did that. He sent, you know, Rutherford somewhere oh y'all wouldn't be saying nothing fox 45 wouldn't have nothing to say about that if if the governor i'm sure there's been times when the governor was supposed to be one place and he sent rutherford you know what i mean lieutenant governor in his place they ain't say nothing about that but the black politician does it and it's so it's some kind of issue for some reason some kind of issue every time every time and, and, and then the listener says why don't you talk about the other side sometime? Why don't you talk about the other perspective sometimes? Because the other perspective is wrong. The other perspective is wrong. Speaking of wrong, what in the blue hell <laughs> is going on at Lenox Mall? What is going on at Lenox Mall? So a security guard in Lenox Mall, and y'all have heard me talk about this, is in critical condition after a shooting. They got a video, some cell phone footage of, of, of the shoot. It's just craziness, right? Anyway, police are investigating the shooting and the guard left in critical condition. So shots fired at Linux Mall, which has metal detectors. I know, I've told you about this. I've gone through the metal detectors many times, set them off with my camera equipment. Happens all the time. So anyway, yesterday around 8.30 p.m., dozens of officers arrive on a scene and were told by witnesses that the security guard had been shot. Victim has not been named as a man in his 40s. Was hitting the torso, not good. Not good. So witnesses say the two suspects approached him with a gun. It is not clear what led to the incident. Not clear at this time. But this this type of this type of action is how the metal detectors got in the mall in the first place. The guard is one of more than 17,000 people to be injured by gun violence this year according to gun violence archive the other two incidents of gun violence took place at or near atlanta malls in the past week two people were in the hospital tuesday evening after being shot near greenbrier mall it's also in georgia Two days later, at least 25 shots were fired after an argument in South Lake Mall in Morrow, Georgia. So uh, many officers were able to respond immediately. 
according to witnesses, where the suspects fled. They conducted a grid search of the area. Two suspects were found outside of the Weston Hotel. It's not far away. Weston Hotel. They, they didn't get far at all. 15-year-old male and a 15-year-old female arrested without incident. They are being charged with criminal attempt to commit murder, armed robbery, aggravated assault, tampering with evidence, possession of a firearm by a person under 18, and possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony. Oh, they are screwed. They are screwed. The identities of the suspects are being withheld because they are juveniles. City of Atlanta is facing what its mayor, Keisha Lance Bottoms, calls a COVID crime wave. There is something to that. I never heard that expression before. But with regards to the Buckhead area, there has been an uptick of violence and crime in that area. As I said earlier, um, for the longest time, it has been the affluent area, the bougie area. The folks with money tend to be there. And many times, I tell you, crime is about the haves and the have-nots. And what we have is the have-nots going to the area where the haves are and wreaking havoc. Havoc. Homicides are up by 63% compared to the same time last year. And of course, we were in pandemic on lockdown this time last year. Lock, lockdown. Atlanta was never really locked down, but um, still. And up 43% compared to the same period in 2019. It's up. So, um, you know, the 43%. Uh, from 20 to 2019 was a, a more uh yeah it's more realistic sample point uh because we were not locked down in 2019 so when you look at the crime compared to 2021 versus 2019 that is more realistic of a point people weren't out as much 2020 so the spike has stirred ongoing conversations in the wealthy Buckhead community about becoming an independent city. What do they think that, that that's going to make a difference? People still don't come to the city. I mean, you may have another charge you can tack on them or something, but I mean, that in itself is not going to stop crime. Some residents say that the community pays too much in taxes and doesn't get the infrastructure and the services it needs in return. Critics of the split warn that the consequences could be devastating. A lot of taxes paid. And they say that they're not getting the benefits of those. So Buckhead's departure would strip Georgia's capital city of a huge part of its revenue. Uh, that tax base, as we said, is wealthy. So you take them from Atlanta and uh, that is that is going to be an impact going to be an impact so usually at the heart of these type of issues is what race so as I said Buckhead's departure would strip Georgia's capital of a huge part of its revenue the move could also stoke racial division between the majority white community and the rest of Atlanta. Good. A city that in the 1970s became known as the Black Mecca of the South. For good reason. The problems that Buckhead are facing, the problems right now that they're facing are not unique to the area. They're shared by other Residents in Atlanta, well, but Buckhead think they special. <laughs> Buckhead think they special. I mean, it's it's uh, it's unfortunate that this, that this is happening, but 
this is happening many places. I mean, I'm talking about Fells Point, and we have things happening in Fells Point in Baltimore. Now, by no means is is Fells Point bucket. Right? It's not. Uh, it is definitely not bucket. But it is an area that's supposed to be or thinks <laughs> that they were above ooh, this type of malfeasance. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's where we are. But of course, when you get out in the real world, you see what's really going on. This is happening everywhere. So what is the answer? Lenox Square Mall. What is the answer? Fowl's point. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. What is the answer? Is the, is the answer a bigger police presence? Police officers walking a beat? Grabbing up people that they think have a gun? Looking at social media? Checking out their mentions? Is that the answer? Yeah, I don't know about that. We have a segment of the population that always thinks the answer to everything is more police presence. And that could be the answer. I just don't think it is. <laughs> but it could be. You're in Diamond K. Diamond K in the morning on the all new radioandfire.com. Of course, I am here daily. Catch me in the mix daily. New music out and about. Search Diamond K on Apple Music, on Spotify, Diamond K. Business owners have had some mixed reactions. Fell's point I'm talking about. Shots were heard over the weekend. It wasn't exactly a shooting, but I guess shooting in the air but step in the right direction I don't know still too soon to say some of the business owners said this about Fells Point don't come into a neighborhood take it over break all the rules reap no repercussions and then leave us with the brick and mess to clean up Business owners said that the issues from Fells Point's business owners have fallen on deaf ears. He said, deaf ears. They think that politicians say that they've done all they can do for the businesses. We want to try to get the families back down in Fells Point. And I think the way they are headed with the extra patrols. We will be able to get some of those families back down here. There's no parking down there. Parking is crappy in Fells Point. Build a parking garage. Maybe that'll help. Build a parking garage. It is not convenient. I don't like going down there personally. I don't like the cobblestone. Right? I don't like the cobblestone. I don't like driving on the cobblestone. And I don't like the crappy parking in Fells Point, honestly. But that's me. Millennials may, may enjoy it. <laughs> wow, water. Diamond K in the morning on the all new radioandfire.com. Of course, we deliver the biggest political and trending news stories of the day with interviews and original reporting from across the country, emanating from our studios in Baltimore and Atlanta. Show us fun, show us upbeat. But you know, I got an opinion about everything. There's very few things that I don't know something about. And I like to talk about them. And of course, I like to hear your thoughts. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok, at the Diamond K Show, at Radio on Fire, the all new Radio on Fire.com. Giving you more talk, more news, and more music. It's Radio on Fire.